Hey cheaters, super excited to show off the next evolution in scraping technology. We've been training a new multimodal model called Atlas One, specifically to solve the hardest problems in automation, including building future-proof, robust automations with a completely new targeting strategy that doesn't use code or selectors that are brittle and break whenever these services update their designs and actually uses English to distill targets to their underlying intent to finally build automations that are robust and future-proof. I'm going to demonstrate this using the Amazon Scraper, which is the most common pattern on the internet, and I'm just going to run it while I explain how it works. And so, when I say it's the like most common pattern on the internet, what I mean is it's a search page and something else, like a search page and a product page and a search page and a profile page. So eBay, Amazon, Zillow, Craigslist, Facebook, Twitter, uh, Cheatlayer, all, every website basically has some kind of form of this pattern. So if you learn this pattern, you learn to automate most of the internet. When we first launched Cheatlayer in 2021, I personally taught hundreds of our first users one by one, how to build this pattern using the first version of Cheatlayer, which was a code generator using GPT-3 in the summer of 2021. We were the first startup to do anything with automation in GPT-3 back then, uh, but we've since designed a new multimodal model called Atlas One that finally solves a problem that breaks all other automation tools, namely, whenever these services update their designs or their code, the selectors break, you have to redesign everything. What's happening in the background right now is we have a new bi-directional deep interconnect between Cheatlayer desktop and our browser, which allows us to analyze all the browser elements on the page using our new multimodal model and computer vision. This is the first time I've ever seen any automation tool do anything like this. And if you look at the top left-hand corner, you kind of get an idea of what it's doing. It's looping through all the links on the page initially. This is the search page. And normally we used to have this big complicated automation where we would do an automation on the search page and the profile page and link them together. But the design of this new targeting strategy even makes it easier to build. And it's looping through all the links and calculating the probability that these links match something called a semantic target, which means it matches the underlying intent of the target in English rather than code. And so it's very robustly finding all the links on the page using computer vision rather than code selectors uh, and scraping all the links necessary for the next step. After it's calculated the probability that any of these elements match our underlying intent for the target, it will um, find either uh, the top list of by ranking them all in based on probability or it'll find the very top matching element. And in this case, we've set it up in the settings to match the entire list. So it'll actually keep the entire scraped list of all those links, which will come in handy uh, in a second. Now what it's doing is it's opened one of those links in a new page, and it's scraping the title and the price to Google Sheets. Except now it's doing it using something called semantic targets, which solves a problem that breaks all other automation tools today, uh, including UiPath and Microsoft um, Automation Anywhere, every single automation tool suffers this problem where if the design of the website changes, you have to go and rebuild the automation. In this case, the website can completely change the design. Everything can, can completely move around and we'll still find basically the underlying intent of the next step. And there it goes. So it's scraped just now the title and now it's moved on to the price. Okay, and now it's actually moved on to the next product in the list. If you remember in the first step, we actually scraped all the products from the search page and um, we're now actually looping through every product in the list. If we check our Google Sheet, we can see that, yep, it's scraped the next, um, uh, the next product on the list and the pricing. Pretty cool stuff. This OCR, um, it's not using actually OCR, it's even using a model to determine the text, not OCR. So there's multiple different models here working together to perform a new bleeding edge scraping that completely reinvents how scraping works to be far more robust than any other automation tool on the planet, at least for now until they copy us. <laughs> so um, now that that's done, it's gonna actually keep going. It's gonna actually keep looping through 
all the products in the list that we scraped earlier. So I'm going to stop it and instead show you how to build this yourself. So in the latest version of Cheat Layer Desktop, we have a quick launch menu, which allows me to very quickly open up that automation and I can show you how I built it. And I'll actually start building it from scratch here in just in a second. But just so you can see how it works in a loop here, after we scrape the initial page, looking for Amazon products, we can then open each one of those in a new tab and then loop through the process of scraping the title and the price and then finally send it to Google Sheets. Okay. So I'm going to build this again. Let's show you how I go through that process. So we're going to go to File, New. We're going to go to an Amazon search. We could have actually started just from the Amazon page and done the like automated the process of searching as well. But this saves a, saves a step, makes the automation a little bit faster. I'm going to copy the URL. Or actually first, we're going to open the Start node. And in the Start node, we have this trick where you can open Chrome as the initial program if you want to and give it a URL. So I'm going to give it this URL to start. There we go. And we can just test this to see what it does. All it does is opens uh, that search page. OK, great. So next, we want to do the semantic scrape. So I'm going to click Scrape. And I'm just going to click off into the side here because I'm not really targeting anything specific on the page. But if we were targeting something specific, we could click on that. And then, so here, I'm going to um, give it the description of um, Amazon uh, Green Dog Treat um, links. Okay. And then we're going to look for all of them. And we're going to target the link destination. That's all we need to do there. And then that's going to go through the process of searching the link destination. Next, we want to actually, after we scraped all those link destinations, we want to open a program. So we're going to open a program. And in the automated mode, we're going to loop through total runs. And the automated URL, we're going to take the first scrape. Okay, that's all we need to do there. And that'll open up everything we scraped here. And every time we loop, it'll actually open up the next product. Uh, like I was just doing before. So now that, um, let's assume that we've opened up one of these products. Let's say that we want to scrape the title and the price. So let's go back to the no-code editor and click scrape. And let's get the click the middle of the title. And then now I'm going to describe what we're scraping in simple English. You'll notice that there's no code or in these, there's no selectors that can break here. We're describing it entirely in English. So a product title for dog treats, which means that even if the underlying design of the website, the colors, the format, even if they move things around, it will still be a product title for dog treats. And that's how it still finds it. This makes automations far more robust. It also makes it much easier to build because you're building the target in simple English. And we want the first one, so it's gonna find the, uh, the one that's uh, closest to this match. And that's it for that. And then next we're gonna scrape the price. Let's click a little bit about this there in the middle. Okay, and I'm gonna type um, the exact number, the exact uh, price in USD. And first, and that's it. Okay, so we've got this, 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 this. Finally, we're going to scrape it to Google Sheets. And for Google Sheets, we just need the URL. And the sheet name is sheet one. And 
And then in the first row, if we go look back at our scrapings, we said uh, the third scrape was the title, the fourth scrape was the price. So let's get the third scrape, the fourth scrape, the price. And finally, to have it loop, all we have to do is connect this to this. And now it'll continue looping through this product and opening new products every time it goes through. And because in this step, we've set it to an automated of looping total runs, it'll constantly loop what we scraped in this first step. Amazing stuff. And I've already saved this, so I already have my own version. And you can save it and run it and test it yourself. Um, and this should, so now that you've learned this general pattern of a search page and something else, a search page and a product page, or a search page and a profile page, you now know how to automate most websites on the internet using the current most bleeding edge semantic scraping technology. And so this targeting strategy is currently the most robust that we know of compared to every other automation tool because as you can see, each step is in simple language and it's robust to even future design changes. All right, thank you guys.